this is a little subject on gaming. I don't know, I feel it's time to lighten up the subject a little bit, since we got so intense the last few videos. I'm trying to just crank out as many of these as I can before uh, the deadline date comes up. Uh, A.K.A. it's 1.35 in the morning, so uh, <laughs> I gotta be able to sneak back into the house, because uh, this is not the house that I live in. This is actually a house where I have an office set up uh, for a work-at-home job. Okay, so... <laughs> um, let's talk about games. The console wars. Everybody has a favorite console. I don't really care. I really don't. Uh, you know what? I've I grew up. Uh, a, what was it? Pong player. You know, in the arcade. Then uh, what was it? Then Pac-Man. Super Miss Pac-Man. Uh, you know, I was an arcade guy for the longest time. And my first uh, my first non-arcade game that I ever played uh, was an Atari. I don't know. Twenty six hundred. It could have been the older model, but I, I know I had Atari 2600 with several games, and the light gun, and one of them was a stupid game where you killed roaches all the time with the light gun, in Missile Command. It was good times. Very retro. I played the hell out of the thing until the thing caught smoke, and uh, <laughs> good times. I had a thing about taking stuff apart, fixing it, and making it better. I had a little fire truck that uh, tore apart, and put it back together, it ran faster and more efficient, and it was crazy. It just, it was one of those things. Um, then, uh, at one point, I got together with a cousin who had a uh, Nintendo. Man, he had a lot of games. We played a lot of Nintendo. You know what my favorite game on Nintendo was? Super Mario Brothers. And Super Mario Brothers 3 when it came out. <laughs> Yeah, Super Mario 3. Still one of the best Marios ever. I don't care what you say. Mario 3. <laughs> uh, then, what was it? A system I got for myself? Sega Genesis. Sonic the Hedgehog rolled up in my life. And I became a Sonic fan. I uh, started watching Sonic Saturday AM, as some people call it. And, uh, you know, voiced by Steve Urkel uh, as, the, uh, as the Blue Hedgehog himself. And, uh, Peter Cummings as Robotnik. Man, that guy had a voice. You ever heard of that guy's voice? Holy crap. Man, Robotnik had the voice, you know, of, like, any villain. You know, of, like, Tony J is the only guy I can think who could actually creep me out as much as he could. You know, Tony J's been a lot of stuff. Tony J also played the voice of Megabyte in Reboot, in case you're curious. Uh, the Elder God in Legacy of Kane series. You know, Tony J has been around. He also played the Chancellor and uh, the Hunchback of uh, Notre Dame. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or Notre Dame, as some people call it. Um, but Peter Cummings is also known for playing the voice of Winnie the Pooh. Anyhow, I became a Sonic fan after watching that series, uh, all 26 episodes, which... 24th episode was a hard one for me to ever find. I didn't watch. I didn't get to see the t episode 24 until years and years later, and uh, that was Cry of the Wolf, I believe, which actually was the only appearance of Lupe, if I remember correctly. Um, anyhow, I like that chemistry. You know, the Princess Sally, Bunny Rabbit, Antoine, and all that. And I was always upset that they never made a Sonic the Hedgehog game with those guys. They turned around and made Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, and they introduced these characters who I just couldn't give a shit about. You know, Shadow... Eh. Eh. Shadow... Uh, whatever. Uh, the... What was it? The post-comic 50 Eggman? You know, instead of original, you know, Julian, you know, Kintobar, a.k.a. Robotnik. You know, I, I miss I miss that guy. Yeah, I read the comics for a while. I still have the 50th comic still sitting in the uh, original little baggy thing with the backing, and on the other side of it is a son, uh, what was it Knuckles 25? I was a big comic reader when I was a kid, and uh, it's basically the episode where I mean the the comic where basically Robotic dies, which was also the last episode of Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Saturday AM, uh, which got canceled as soon as Snively came back with uh, basically the evil wizard Nagus. You know, I'm not alone! <laughs> but, uh, console, 
I grew up in the Sega times. Then I got a Super Nintendo. Got Super Mario World, and I was like, is this better? I, I can't decide. Is Super Mario World better than Mario 3? <laughs> I still haven't come to a conclusion on that, but I still like Super Mario 3. I can never decide if Super Mario World was better. Certainly had a lot more levels, and yeah, I like that. And then I, it was really colorful. It was it was more fun. I'll admit that. But was it better? I like my Hammer Brothers suit. Sorry. Yes, the Hammer Brothers suit still steals me. That's it. I'm throwing hammers. Boop 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 boop. <laughs> You'll catch that one, Jessica. Uh, anyhow. Um. Then eventually, I moved into getting a... I met my friend Matt in uh, high school, and uh, he introduced me to Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 2. And, uh... What was it? Uh, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger changed my life. Because after I played Chrono Trigger, it was like, I gotta play every RPG. Star Ocean. Star Ocean 2. Uh, is it uh, Terra Enigma? Uh, what was it? Azura Dreams, Tales of Destiny, just everything that just came out after that. Final Fantasy VII, gotta pick it up. Final Fantasy Anthology, Final Fantasy Chronicles, <laughs> give me, give me all of that. And I got to about Final Fantasy XI, and I stopped caring because the online game. I don't know. My first experience with Final Fantasy XI with my PS2 was, please install the hard drive with the network connector. Cool! Yeah, a new expansion hardware for my PS2. Awesome! And then I plugged it in, and then it was big eight-hour update. Cool! Now I can play my game! Four-hour update for Final Fantasy XI. That was already pre-installed on the game. On the drive. <laughs> what? What? Twelve hours that the PlayStation 2 was on, and boy, they did not like that. Then I found out that for each additional character that you decide to make, it's an extra dollar a month. I like creating alts. That did not work well with me. It did not sit well with me at all. Because it was like 14 bucks a month or something like that. Mm -mm. Didn't care for it. So, I got in, decided to play the game, started going around and killing stuff. Uh, then I ran back to the town to try to do the quest. And uh, I had no idea where I was going. Okay, World of Warcraft, they put a little boop above something's head when you have to go to, you know, pick up a quest. Cool. Something kind of like that in Final Fantasy XI when I first played it. Not quite. They didn't really tell you where you had to go. It's like, oh, well, we need to deliver these flyers to 33 different people, but only certain NPCs in this gigantic kingdom will take your flyers. And they're not marked on the map or above their head. Good luck finding them. So then you find a ranger who has a perk ability, who uh, helped me find, helped me eventually figure that out three, four hours later. And he's like, oh, we'll just come here, here, here. It's like, do I need to have a guy with this perk in order to play the game? I mean, seriously, to do quest? Because there's no explanation points above people. <gasps> ah! MMO, that was my first experience with MMO. Did not like it. Did not like it. Actually, no, it may have been my second, because I was doing World of Warcraft beta at the time, and I was starting to get used to that. Okay, well, then I got my character up to level 40 or something, made a dragoon or some shit, and uh, I realized at that particular point I was playing the game, the mobs leveled up with you. So that same bunny I was fighting outside of the kingdom originally was kicking my ass later. What? I'm a dragoon! Bunny shouldn't mess with me. I should put... Uh, give that bunny. Just a bunny. I am a man in heavy armor. Kicking butt. Taking name. And then, what was kind of weird, instead of creating multiple characters of different classes, you basically re-rolled your character, gave him a different job role, and leveled up that class thing, and then you, just you went back to your little self-contained instance to room and changed your class again to go bounce back and forth between your roles that you needed to level. Weird. Yeah. Then I got in the World of Warcraft scene after quitting that bullshit. And, uh, well, I'm pretty sure anybody who's ever played World of Warcraft doesn't need me to explain, but I did that for God knows how many years. 
And uh, the original, original reason I got into that was actually an ex-girlfriend. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a real relationship, because it was just something... It was a relationship I was starting with, and she got me into it as kind of a way to socialize with her, and then she disappeared off the game because she wanted to go to another server, and I wasn't about to pay $25 more to transfer servers, so I got stuck with a guy named uh, Dave, also known as Edifice or Oedipus, as we all called him, even though it was incorrectly pronounced. And uh, basically, like, Oedipus, you know, Oedipus Complex, boo, he was a rogue. And most people were like, all like, man, don't trust that fool, he's a, he's a rogue, he'll steal your shit. I'm like, man, this is like MMO racism. Don't be hating on the rogue. Rogue ain't gonna steal your shit. Hey, yo, you want my uh, extra gear to disenchant? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. I can enchant your gear. <laughs> you can make my gear better? Yeah! Bing! 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 Enchant your gear. No! Destroying worlds now because I'm enchanted! Look at my flamey death weapon! <laughs> I was undead. Technically, it was more like, I will destroy everything! Ah! Was it. Was it a. Uh, For the Forsaken! <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> Good times. But, uh, you know, after the whole World of Warcraft story isn't even important, but it was basically came to the point where we made this guild, 483 people. Most people didn't even know we had this guild because we basically picked up people as we went along. We trained them how to be better at their class, and we basically ran multiple instances, and nobody really saw us at Ogremar. We weren't one of those guy, one of those guilds where we just sat around at Ogremar and just be like, check out my awesome gear. Look how badass I am. Nobody gave a shit. If you're one of those guys, you're wasting your subscription. We had fun. We did little missions. We made little role-playing places where, you know, come meet us out in this hidden cave out in the middle of, like, you know, out in the middle of the uh, ocean over here, da-da-da, you know, at this time. And then your secret mission for the rogues would be that they'd have to sneak through and not kill any mobs or trigger any of the mobs or whatever at a certain level, you know. And we, we had little things that made it interesting. And uh, that, that's how we did. That's how we did the game. We play. We made our own rules. We made our own missions and stuff like that. And that, that's how that's how you make an MMO fun. Because the MMO itself was kind of. Eh, eh. We added our own role-playing elements to it, just to make it interesting. Because I've never been one to go with stock MMO. Anyhow, moving on. I've had a Super Nintendo. I've had a PlayStation. I had a PlayStation Two. I have had an Xbox. I have had a Dreamcast. Awesome. Dreamcast is awesome. Uh, never owned a PS3 because it's been on my price range. Uh, I got an Xbox 360 for $40 at a pawn shop with the Red Ring of Death. I paid 649 at a Home Depot to change out the panhead screws on it. and it worked great for me for several years until I had to sell it for rent along with the TV that I had, which is a nice 28-inch HD TV. Oh, back when they were still like three hundred, four hundred dollars, <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay, and then what was it? Same time I was doing the World of Warcraft thing, I first found out about Steam, and it was no big deal back then. It was the only reason I had Steam was because uh, Half Life Two was coming out, and I played Half Life One. I was like, dude, Half Life One is awesome. So they're like Half Life Two, you know. Silver Edition, Gold Edition, and, you know, Bronze Edition. And I'm like, Silver Edition? What do you get with Silver Edition? And they're like, you get Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, and every Half-Life game before that. And every Valve game before that. Well, shit, I'm buying that. How much is it? $49. Sold! That's my first purchase on Steam, by the way. If anybody ever wants to know, and everybody asks me, he's like, well, there's no such thing as a St Silver Edition. Don't make me pull up the screenshot. I still have the receipt for it. Yeah, there was a silver package. This is the younger days of Steam. I have nine years of service underneath me since then. Okay? And Steam... Steam is the criminal of my bank account. Because every time a Steam sale comes along, I have to question, who robbed my bank account? I know I only spent so much money, but it seems that I spent it all. Because there's so many games! I remember buying every game THQ ever made. It was like something like 50 bucks for every game they ever made. It was awesome. 
<laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was a lot, a lot of stuff. Steam is awesome. I, I've learned by doing the math over the years that Steam was saving me more money than buying a console with 30 to $50 games all the time at 15 used. And occasional four ninety nine bargain bin games. And those are usually games you never wanted to begin with. Steam, I've gotten games I've always wanted to play for next to nothing. So, yeah, Steam. So I ended up uh, getting a laptop traveling around with Tom, uh, because Tom made me travel around with him for two years, traveling the United States, this U.S. console general guy, and I said, I can't be away from my baby that long. Your baby? What's your baby? I have a little computer called April 7. She's just this big Antec 900 tower, you know, with all the good shit inside of her, and a nice little monitor, and he's like, April? You named your computer? I'm like, yeah, I named my computer. I named it after a friend of mine who died in a car accident, and I said, fine, I'll name the one thing I spend the most time with after her. So I did. And the seven is because I've revised her seven times. And she's been my, my beast of gaming. You know, and by the way, I raised my hand in guilt. I used to play Diablo 2 religiously. I have even installed them on my school's uh, computers, along with the original Diablo, and played them uh, religiously at school. Well, when you're ahead in your homework, you have nothing else to do, so you just end up, you know, sneaking at it on the sly and just tell them it's a browser-based game. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a browser-based game. It was actually ran off the CD. Yeah, anyhow. <laughs> um, he ended up saying, it's like, well... You, what is this April? Are you going to take it with you? I'm like, no, I'm not carrying around an 84-pound fucking death machine computer. It's like, well, what do you need? I says, well, I'd need a laptop that could be equivalent to her. How much is it? I'm like, oh, uh, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, why, why, you plan on buying it? Maybe. Well, okay, well, it looks like it's going to be $2,600 after all said and done. Get it. Get the laptop. But, anything else you want? Well, I do kind of want this tablet uh, where I can draw on it, so whatnot. It's like I originally wanted the Cintiq, you know, big-ass thing. And I said I can't carry that around with me, though. It's like, well, what's the tablet going to cost? Uh, about 1400 bucks. No, no, it's, no, sorry, it's about 1000 bucks. Get it. So, I got the Asus EP121 when it was still the new shit. And uh, played the hell out of games on both things. Installed a shit ton of games on Steam. And that was kind of my big thing. And I've been playing Steam games ever since. Uh, Origin occasionally, even though I don't really care for their setup. And, uh, you know, every so often I got a couple classic games that I've installed. And that's some of my gaming. Um, I'm a big arcade guy. One of my old arcade games I used to love playing was um was the Alien vs. Predator arcade game. That was good times. Or was it the Aliens arcade game? It was it was one of those two. It was one of the side scrolling where you had the guy with the big ass machine gun arm. You could play as the Predators bleh, you know or whatever the hell. <laughs> and uh was it Killer Instinct. When Killer Instinct came in the arcade, it, Mortal Kombat just became a kind of a wayside thing until multiple Mortal Kombat three Ultimate came out. But it was like Killer Instinct, I'm like, Fulgore! c c c combo breaker You know, just, just getting heavy into it, and I eventually figured out this 14-button uh, combination to do in Fulgore, where it would glitch the freaking game out, and Fulgore would just, just go ape shit, beating the hell out of you for, like, 14 minutes. It was just the stupidest thing. I, I don't know if it was 14 minutes, but it sure, it sure felt like it, because... I'd sit there and make bets with kids, you know, that come into the arcade, like, I bet you I could beat your ass, and it wouldn't stop beating your ass until I was, until I got down, got lunch, and came back. And they're like, oh yeah, well, you're wrong. It's like, I'll take all of your quarters sitting up on that table, uh, if you lose. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. So, insert full gore match. <laughs> I'd walk away. I'd go, I'd take the quarters off of the, the table. I'd go over to get myself a corn dog, because I get foot long corn dogs at the mall, and they were awesome, because they were fresh made there. As uh, a corn dog on a stick was the name of the place. I'd go over to uh, 
was the place on the opposite side of that, which was Corn Dog Stadium. I gave myself some mini corn dogs as poppers for as I went, and then a big large lemonade, which was fresh made there because they had the whole gigantic squeezy lemonade thingy. It was awesome. And I'd walk back, chewing down the big old corn dog, being like, "Yup, your ass got whooped." And uh, come in there, and this kid's job. You know, this this would happen many times. So this is just to be the standard reaction, just be like. And, you know, you see Fulgur finally finishing and knocking the player off of the uh, little pyramid thing, and they go flying down to the like, little spinny saw blade things or at the bottom, or whatever the hell was down there. And, uh, he, he just, he just did this weird glitch thing, which is like, ULTIMATE 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 HYPER 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 COMBO 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 And this, this kid would just, like, look like I just broke him. <laughs> oh man, glitch for the win, and uh, it, was the, it was the greatest way to get free lunch because I'd waste all my damn quarters there. I got twenty dollars, twenty dollars every other day to go down to the arcade because that was kind of part of my massive allowance for working at the uh, working at the uh, place with my parents. You know, kind of a behind the scenes employee, kind of free labor if you know what I'm saying. So I come and I help my parents set up and everything like that, and they'd send me off with the roll of quarters. I would dump them out. And uh, I wouldn't have any money for lunch, and you know, even though I would occasionally get free food at you know Paltani's, which is the place that they worked at at the time, it was like, eh, you, know, you get tired of eating the same thing all the time. So how do you do it? You make bets. I wasn't the best arcade guy, but I'll tell you what, I knew all the tricks because me and Al were great friends. Who's Al, you ask? Al was the guy who ran the arcade, and he told me all the dirty tricks, including how to get free things out of the. Uh, out of the uh, little claw machine, you know, how to get the free coin things or whatever, be the diagnostic mode. So I'd go and I'd make bets with people, you know, be like, okay, I bet you I can get a prize from this thing, but this go, no, -uh. well, I bet you, I bet you two dollars and quarters. All right. Pick up the little thing, get me a little doll. Of course, I wouldn't keep the doll because I would be an honest guy, and I'd give it back to Al. It's like, go ahead, Al. There's something else for you to throw back in the machine. Just get my two bucks and quarters and go back and dump them in the arcade. It was a lucrative business. Okay, it was a social scene. Okay, then they start killing off arcades and home consoles. It became the big thing when they started becoming affordable for everybody because we have the things basically like pawn shops, known as Game Stops, Game Game uh, Game Crazy. Uh, there was a bunch of weird ass names, including EB Games and stuff like that, Babbages, and it became the thing where people could get consoles for dirt cheap. And then the arcade started dying, and the mall that I was at uh, looks like a big set of tits, it, like Madonna tits, because they'd have these two white cones at the top, you know, like, whoop, whoop, you know, and it, I always called it the Tit Mall, and I guess the owners got tired of young people constantly coming and basically just owning up the whole mall. So they're like, well, we need to do a retro design on the front of the mall. Well, the mall was originally ahead of its time. Like, even in modern designs, it would actually be kind of cool because it was black tinted windows with red bar trim and, you know, red handlebars front. It was like space age futuristic red and black. And then they changed it to, like, this, like, 50s beige building with a stupid sundial, like, you know, sun, sunflower metal art, modern art logo bullshit on the front. It looks retarded. Well, the mall died. Uh, the only thing that's really keeping the whole mall in life support is, like, this target that's attached to it. And, uh, it's about stupid as shit. It's basically the life support of the mall. The entire upstairs where the candy store was, the corn dog places, and the arcade, completely closed off and actually uh, federally sanctioned by law where you can't actually go up there for any legal reason. So I, turn, I take it it's been converted to some sort of government thing or something up there because you're not allowed to go up there now. Can't imagine why it would be illegal to go upstairs. It's condemned. Um, oh, and a fairly rinky-dink uh, anime slash wannabe arcade slash geek mall uh, uh, shop there, which is basically where you can get all of your otaku needs in one little place. And the guy had a couple generic arcade things. 
And you know what else also killed the arcade? Taxing per quarter slot. If you had a four-player game, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something like that, or Captain America and the Avengers, you were in a world of shit, because you'd have to pay tax for each one of the slots and players on that thing. Yeah, have fun with that. Needless to say, so that's my short story for the uh, for the gaming. You want to know anything about? Yeah, you want to know anything else that I like video game wise? Feel free to ask me. I don't have really a favorite genre. I love RPGs. I love a good story. I believe every game should have a story. Graphics are kind of eh. graphics are alright with me. They give me a reason to push my computer. But you know what? Graphics aren't what sells me in a game. Storyline, funness. Gameplay. I mean, shit, I play Retro City Rampage. The game looks like ass, but you know what? It's hilarious to play. So, you know what? Graphics? No. Graphics don't sell me on games. Anyhow, leave a comment below. Like, comment, subscribe.